Hello, my name's Sam Messiano, and I'm going to talk about the hormonal control of human parturition. Okay, so for most of human pregnancy, the uterus is maintained in a quiescent state. Okay, so it's not contracting, it's uh, growing to accommodate the developing fetus, and the cervix is closed and rigid. So it's housing the fetus for 37 to 40 weeks. At some point in pregnancy, the uterus transforms such that the muscle of the uterus begins to acquire a contractile phenotype whereby it can contract forcefully and rhythmically to become the engine for birth. The cervix, which is, as I said, usually closed and rigid, begins to soften such that it can open and dilate and become the gateway for birth. And the membranes that surround the fetus begin to weaken so that when the fetus is born, the membranes rupture to free the fetus. And these processes are the definition of labor. Okay, So myometrium contraction, cervical softening, and membrane weakening are the process of labor that usually happen during the last 24 to 72 hours of pregnancy, and they effectively cause the emptying of the uterus. So the process of parturition is controlled by hormones, and these hormones can be divided into two types, uterotropins that affect the growth and function of the uterus, and uterotonins that affect the, the, the muscular tone of the uterus and the contractile state of the uterus that stimulate contractions directly. So the key uterotropins are the steroid hormones progesterone and estrogen. Now, progesterone, as its name implies, is progestational. It causes changes in the uterus that promote the quiescent state. Okay, so progesterone promotes uterine quiescence. On the other hand, estrogens oppose the actions of progesterone and generally increase the, the function of the uterus in terms of its, its laboring state. So it will increase gap junctions between myometrial cells, iron channels, so that the myometrial cells become more excitable. And it will increase the receptors for uterotonins that cause contractions and stimulate uterotonin production in some cell types. The major uterotonins of the uterus are prostaglandin F2-alpha and oxytocin. Prostaglandin F2-alpha will not only stimulate contractions of the myometrium, but will also cause the, the cervix to soften and dilate. And oxytocin is a potent stimulator of uterine contractions. So changes in these hormones transition the uterus from the quiescent to the laboring state. And the main changes are that the effects of progesterone are removed and the effects of estrogen are acquired. Um, so there's progesterone withdrawal, and estrogen activation. So in most animals, we see this progesterone withdrawal and estrogen activation that is reflected in the circulating levels of progesterone here in red and estradiol in these, cur in these graphs in green. And you can see in the rat, the sheep, and the cow that progesterone levels go down just before the onset of labor and estrogen levels go up. And it's these changes in circulating levels of the steroid hormones that change the function of the uterus and transition the uterus from the quiescent to the laboring state. And that's all fine. But this doesn't happen in women. In women, the levels of progesterone stay high for most of pregnancy, and so too do the levels of estradiol. Yet what we know is that in women, if we block the function of progesterone, with a progesterone receptor antagonist, such as IU486, then labor and delivery will occur within 24 to 72 hours. So the question is, how are progesterone and estrogen actions controlled, given that they don't appear to be controlled by the circulating levels? So the leading hypothesis to explain how the functions of estrogen and progesterone are controlled to initiate and facilitate the process of human parturition is that instead of the function of these steroids being regulated by the circulating level, instead the function is regulated by the sensitivity of the target cells to these steroids. 
So we hypothesize that there is a functional progesterone withdrawal and a functional estrogen activation that cause the changes needed and trigger the process of parturition. So we hypothesize that for most of pregnancy, the uterus is responsive to progesterone and refractory to estradiol, so it's responsive to the relaxatory actions of progesterone to maintain quiescent, quiescence, and that parturition is triggered by a switch in that, in, the, in that the, the uterus becomes refractory to progesterone to cause a functional progesterone withdrawal, and it becomes responsive to estrogens to cause a functional estrogen activation. And current research is suggesting that one of the leading mechanisms for that is that it, there are changes in the signaling pathways triggered by the progesterone and estrogen receptors such that progesterone can no longer maintain quiescence through the progesterone receptor and that changes in estrogen receptor signaling start, begin to become activated so that estrogen can drive the uterus towards the laboring state. And there are various mechanisms that affect these uh, changes in, in PR and ER signaling, one of which is the inflammatory state of the uterus, so that if there's a lot of inflammation and a lot of inflammatory drive to the uterus, it can actually cause these changes to occur and cause labor to happen. And this is one of the, the main me uh, causes of preterm labor. Um, uh, things like chorioamnionitis or intrauterine infection can effectively change progesterone and estrogen receptor signaling to, to trigger parturition. So I hope this has helped in your understanding of the hormonal control of parturition.